Welcome back to another video with us here at LMD and STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working on question five, part B, um, from the Cape Chemistry Unit 1 Paper 2 exam from June 1999. So the first part reads, state Hess's law. Hess's law states that the total enthalpy change for a chemical reaction is independent of the route by which the reaction proceeds. Now, this law here, Hess's law, forms the basis of us being able to do calculations that involves enthalpy cycles. And so we have to be sure that we remember the statement of this law, okay? So moving on now to part two. Part two is a calculation in which we're gonna have to use Hess's law. So part two says that sodium hydrogen carbonate is used in baking as a dough riser. The thermal decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate is represented by the equation below. So here's our equation. It says that two moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate solid decomposes into a mole of sodium carbonate in its solid state plus a mole of carbon dioxide gas and a mole of steam, right? So the question is, to use the following data to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. So here's our reaction, and here is the data. The data is formation, standard enthalpy of formation values for each of these species. So we have a formation value for the carbon dioxide. We have a value for the sodium hydrogen carbonate. We have a formation value for the sodium carbonate itself and we have a formation value for steam. And so you might remember in our previous part of this question 5A, I'll link it in this video here, we discussed what formation was, the enthalpy of formation was. And so here we're being asked to use those formation values to find the enthalpy change of this reaction. So here we go. Now here's how we're gonna set up this question. So here I have just the reaction that we need to find the enthalpy change for. So this is the reaction that we need to find the enthalpy change for. And to do that, we're going to need to use standard enthalpy of formation of every single compound that's here. Okay, so let me just add above this arrow here that this is what we're seeking. We're seeking to find delta... H R theta. So that's what we want to find. That's our objective here. We want to find the enthalpy change of this particular reaction, and we need to use formation values. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just draw like a little, we're going to just put a little line down here, right? And on this line, what we're going to put is we're going to put all of the elements in their standard state or their normal physical state that are needed to form each of these compounds, right? And so let's start by doing that. So the first element that we see that we need to write in this normal physical state is sodium. So we're going to just jot sodium on this line. Any in its solid state. We're going to need that. Right? We're also going to need hydrogen in its normal physical state or its standard state. And that exists as just H2, that diatomic gas. Right? We're also going to need carbon in its normal physical state. And that is just carbon solid. Right? Or sometimes we can write graphite in parentheses. And then finally, we need oxygen. Right? Oxygen exists as a diatomic gas in its normal physical state. So I just wrote that there. Okay. Now we need to balance this, th these species down here. Because remember now, they're going to go to form here. Those are the same species that are going to go to form here. And here. And here. Okay. So when I look here, when I just take my left hand side, we just look over here. Let's just zero in on over here for now. We see that there are two 
sodium atoms because there are two moles of this. So I can drop a two right here. Okay. So now that's balanced. I see that there are also two hydrogens, which I've already captured here. So that's good. Now carbon, there are two of them here. So I have to put a two before the carbon on this line. And then the oxygen, there are six of them. And so I'm going to have to put a three right here. All right. So now what we just showed essentially is the enthalpy, right? The standard enthalpy change of formation for each of these species. I've just shown it in an equation format. So this, right? This arrow here, let's look at this arrow here first. This represents the formation of any HCO3. However, generally the formation is, in, is defined for the formation of one mole of a compound. But because we have two here, we're going to have to jot down that this, this arrow actually represents two times the delta H of formation of any HCO3 because there are two moles that are being formed there from their elements, okay? So that's two times that formation value. And then here, we see that we're forming one mole of the sodium carbonate from its elements. So of course, we'd be using this, we'd be using this, and we'd be using this. And so that would just be a delta HF, right? Because we're only forming one mole, so it's just delta HF of the sodium carbonate in its solid state, right? And then we look here, we're forming a mole of carbon dioxide from its elements. So we would be using this and this. And so we write delta HF theta for carbon dioxide gas. Okay, that's what that arrow represents. And then finally, this arrow represents the formation of steam from its elements. So we're going to be using, of course, the hydrogen there and the water and the oxygen rather to get the steam. And so that would be delta HF theta for H2. Yes. Okay. So now we're ready to work. We've been given these values. So we know this value. We know this value. We know this value. And we know this value. And we are required to find this unknown value. So here's how we do Hess's Law's calculations. I have these arrows and I have this arrow. So what I'm going to do, it's an enthalpy cycle. So I can draw a complete circle, a complete loop around them. So I'm going to do that. So here's my loop. Okay, I'm just looping around all of those equations there. And I'm coming right back to where I started. And I just went in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to, I can show my arrows going around that way in a clockwise direction, since that's the way I drew the cycle in. Okay, so here are my arrows. All right. So what we do next after drawing the clockwise cycle is that we're going to look for the arrows within here and here that are going with my cycle. And when I look at that, I see that this is going with the cycle. So I'm going to take that one as being positive in value. And then I'm going to just write that there, positive in sign. So I write two times delta HF theta. This is also going with the cycle that I drew, this one, which is our unknown. So I'm going to put that one actually. Let me just put that here. I'm going to put that one in blue as I've shown it there. So that's our that's our objective, right? That's the one that we want to find. Because it's going with my arrow, I keep it as a positive sign. Okay, so now let's look at the others, right? Where's this one going in relation to my arrows? All of these are going upwards while these arrows are all coming down. So they're going against the arrow. And so I'm going to, these are going to be negative in sign because they're opposed in the direction in which I am going that clockwise direction. So I'll put minus in front of them. So I'm going to put minus delta H F theta for the sodium carbonate. So that's Na2CO3. 
squared solid. And let me just put here that this is the two times the formation for the sodium hydrogen carbonate. So there's no confusion there, okay? In its solid state. So that's what that first one represented. So we're, we can write this second one as well over here. That's for the formation of carbon dioxide. That arrow is opposing this arrow. So I'm going to put minus delta HF theta CO2 in its gas phase. And then this is also, this arrow is, is pointing up and my arrow is pointing down. It's opposing it. So that's why we put a minus sign before it, right? Theta H2O gas, right? So that's steam being formed there. And then we're going to set that all equal to zero. Why is it equal to zero? It's because I made a complete cycle. That's that independence of the root taken kind of thing coming back into play here that Hesse's law said, all right? So we went around the circle and we came, we went around and we came back, we came back full circle, so everything added up to zero. Remember now, our objective is to find this. We want to find this, okay? We want to find the enthalpy change for the reaction, which is delta HR, the enthalpy change of that reaction that's here, okay? So we're going to isolate, we're going to put this on a side by itself. We're going to make it the subject of this equation, okay? So in order to do that, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to move all the other formation values that are on this side of the equation across the equal sign. And so that means that their signs, as currently written, are going to flip when we put them over the equal sign. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write back my delta H, theta R here. I want that to be my subject. So then everything else will be on the other side of the equal sign. So on the other side of the equal sign, now we're going to have, we're going to bring this over. It was positive. So it will become minus 2 times delta H, F, theta for the sodium hydrogen carbonate in its solid phase. Okay, we're going to bring over this and it's going to become positive when we bring it over the equal sign. So that will become plus delta HF theta sodium carbonate in its solid state. And then we're going to bring this one over. The equal sign is going to become plus delta HF theta for carbon dioxide gas. Okay, and then finally, we're going to bring over this one. So that will become plus delta HF theta H2O gas. Okay, so all that remains is that we're going to have to just plug in these numbers that they gave us. And then we will get a value for a delta HR theta. Okay, so... Let's just do that real quick. Delta HR theta, right? That's the enthalpy change for this reaction is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to minus two times the one for sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is here. So that's two to minus two times minus 947.7. The delta HF for the sodium carbonate solid. So that's this one. So that is plus, we're going to plus minus 1131. One. Okay. Then to that, we're going to add this one, the formation for carbon dioxide. So that's that. So that would be minus 393. Okay. And then to that, we're going to add the formation for the steam. So that one is here. So that would be minus 241.8, okay? And when we add all of that together, we get that. I'm going to put the answer up here, okay? When we add all of these together, we get a value for delta HR of positive put it back in, keep my colors straight. So that will be positive 
129.6 kilojoule per mole. Okay? So that is the enthalpy change of this reaction as it is written here. Okay? And so we can see that this is endothermic, right? So we see our positive sign there. So we know that that is an endothermic process. And thermal decompositions, generally speaking, are going to be endothermic process because you need to put in energy to break down that solid into these other components, okay? So the sign reflects that, that it's an endothermic process, and this is the value, and that's how we would go about doing that enthalpy change calculation, okay? All right, so let's move on now to the other part of this question. So let's just clear this. Okay, we're going to move on to the other part of this question, which is part three. And part three says that we should construct an energy profile diagram for this reaction. So as we just established now, that was an endothermic reaction. And that's the most important consideration that we have to know when we're drawing an energy profile diagram, okay? So it's an endothermic reaction. We just figured that out based on our calculation and the sign of that um, value. So here we go now with our energy profile diagram, right? Our y-axis, okay? So on our y-axis, that's where we're going to have energy, right? We're going to have energy on our y-axis. And then on our x-axis, we're going to have reaction pathway. So we have to make sure that we get our labeling down as well if we want to get full marks. So as I said, this axis will be labeled energy, right? And, uh, and then down here, we're going to have our reaction pathway. Okay, reaction pathway. Okay, so our, we're going to, because an endothermic process, you know that the reactants, right, will be what? The reactants will be lower than the products. And so I can start by putting my reactants down here. So I'll just draw like a line here um, for my reactants, which in this case, it's only the two moles of the sodium hydrogen carbonate in the solid state. That's the only thing that we started with, right? So that was our reactant. And because it's an endothermic process, we're going to draw a line going up to our products. So our products are going to be higher in energy than our reactants. So our products, what were our products again? It was Na2CO3 in the solid phase plus carbon dioxide gas plus steam. Okay. So just a few things I want to point out here. My Along my reaction pathway, when I just started the reaction, all I had was a reactant, so that's why that's close to the corner. And then as the reaction proceeds, I start to get my products, so that's why my products are out here, okay? Because it's endothermic, I show my reactants being lower than my products. And so this difference... Okay, this difference here is actually the enthalpy change of the reaction. So the difference between these two lines is my delta HR that we just calculated. Okay, and that had a value of what did we say? Positive 129.6 kilojoule per mole. So I guess for completeness, completeness' sake, we could also label our axes here in the units of energy in kilojoule per mole, okay? So here's our delta HR, and here's our product, and here's our reactants, and with that, that's all that's required, okay, for this energy profile diagram. So we've come to the end here. Definitely subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with a friend, comment down below if this helped you, and we'll definitely look forward to seeing you in our next video. So thanks for watching.